So here is Amy Carr. Amy Carr is going to kill her newborn kid. Amy Carr is going to kill her newborn kid in El Paso County. This is Colorado Springs. This is the same place where Leticia Staunch, Leticia Staunch had also did the same thing that Amy Carr had done. Only was more vicious and more fucked up and more. Both of them are going to eventually, they're both going to say not guilty by reason of insanity. Now, I think Amy Carr actually has some plausible, there's something there with Amy Carr. She's only 18 or 19 years of age. So she's been an adult a whole, what, one year? She's been an adult a whole one year. And clearly you're not supposed to kill a kid. So clearly she should get punished. But Leticia Stouts is getting a big old trial. Leticia Stouts has got a 12-day trial. Leticia Stouts got a preliminary hearing. Amy Carr seems as though she's just a poor peasant. So we're going to throw the book at this poor peasant. Leticia Stouts has a federal lawsuit. Does Amy Carr have a federal lawsuit? Who the hell is representing Amy Carr? How come Leticia Stouts has the best goddamn representation that the world has ever fucking seen? Meanwhile, Amy Carr, she's going to accept a plea deal, and they're going to say that this is less than, but I don't think it is less than. I'll read the details here in a second. But that's Amy Carr. There was a January 23rd, 2021, the baby was in the yard, half buried. The newborn was dead. So she's only 18, 19, not excusing it, but that is a mitigating factor for a lesser sentence. She killed a kid, and if you kill a kid, that's an automatic life sentence in Colorado. And this shit keeps happening over and over again. You got D D Denise Cordova. And then I just saw another two-year-old found dead in crib. Parents charged with murder, prosecutor says, March 24th. So, January 23rd, 2021. El Paso County Sheriff's Office received a 911 call tied to an unresponsive newborn. A family relative who called 911 said the newborn was lying partially buried in her yard. The Sheriff's Office wrote in a news release when authorities arrived at the scene, they found the newborn dead. Carr was 18 when the baby was born and turned 19 January 25th. So just two days away from her 19-year-old birthday. My point with the age isn't so much she's an adult. She should pay for her crimes. But being that she's 18 or 19, she's going to say that she's not guilty by reason of insanity because she had major trauma. She had major physical and sexual violence and she had like 20 something addresses in just 15 years Amy Carr has gone through some shit Amy Carr has gone through some shit if there's a person that needs to be a Karen or needs a Karen on her side it's Amy Carr now they're going to say as a part of a plea deal Amy Carr pleaded guilty to second degree murder and tampering with the deceased body Second degree murder, so she intentionally killed Lily. She didn't premeditate it. She didn't plan it. It just happened. She snapped, killed the baby. Sids, right? There's sh shaken infant uh, syndrome. In d this something. Shaken baby syndrome, Sids. What's the D stand for? God damn. <laughs> Carr was initially facing five charges, including first-degree murder. Okay, so they're going to try to say that she pleaded not guilty by reason of insanity. I think Amy Carr is fucking insane. God damn, 20 addresses, she's got no stability. So what kind of parents could she have in her life? What kind of, you know, uh, 15 different addresses and then major uh, sexual and physical abuse? So the moment that she's released out into the world... Well, you've had no stability, no upbringing. You've had no training whatsoever to be an adult. And in fact, you've had the exact opposite. Now, if you would have, you know, if she would have found a place like some socialist wonderland where they would have, you know, gave her the food and water and clothing and shelter and security that she needed, I think she would have overcome. And I think that she would have been, you know, give people a chance. She gone through some shit, so I would think that she would be against putting her kid through the same shit that she gone through. We're rational animals. Some people just want to say we're animals. No, we're rational animals. That means that's all we got is the facts, logic. If you don't have personal 
knowledge of the thing, then the only thing that you got is evidence that suggests or evidence that proves. So I don't know how she killed the baby or what the hell, what happened to it. It didn't say that like she shot it. Didn't say that she had stabbed it. That Letitia Stouch stabbed an 11 year old 18 times and then shot the 11 year old after stabbing him 18 times as if the stabbing wasn't enough. Did you stab him 18 times and he was still like moaning? Still like barely there or something? And then the shot was like a mercy shot at that point, right? Letitia Stouch gets a federal lawsuit. She gets a 12-day trial. She gets a preliminary hearing. Meanwhile, Amy Carr actually, there's something to Amy Carr. There's something to, she's going to plead to, and then guess, <laughs> so she pleads guilty to second-degree murder and tampering with a deceased body. Well, there's, they've doubled the charges for crimes of violence. Prosecutor said Amy Carr had every opportunity to avoid this tragedy given the circumstances of this case. KKTV 11 News wants to remind the public of the safe haven law. So that means desperate mothers can leave their child at any fire station or hospital within 72 hours of birth without facing prosecution. You're a mother. You just had a kid. You're freaking out. You got three days to give it to a hospital, give it to a fire station, and you have no prosecution, no questions asked. We don't want that kid to get hurt. We don't want you to get freak out and think that you got to do something to the baby in order to be able to live. Go to the fire station. They'll go through the adoption process. They'll find a family for the baby, and then you go home, and you take a breath. You're stressed out. It's capitalism. You got rent. Rent comes every fucking first of the fucking month. And then you got 12 months every goddamn year. And then you got to satisfy some piece of shit boss to get some fucking cash to pay some piece of shit landlord. Meanwhile, you build no equity. You get nowhere in the world. On Friday, defense attorneys recounted Car uh, Amy Carr's troubled past. She allegedly lived in 23 different locations from 5 to 14. That means there's years where she lived two different locations. Well, we're going to live in Maine this year. What about next year? Oh, we're going to live in uh, fucking Oregon. Eh, goddamn Hawaii. Nah, let's try Oklahoma. Let's uh, do some Alabama this year. Now, we're going to do 23 different locations. There's 50 states, so about half the states. Is that what we're going to... According to the defense, Amy Carr experienced extreme repeated physical and sexual and physical abuse. Those children over there in Costilla County for five years were being abused. Nobody said a damn word. Where the hell are the police? How come the police don't stop crimes? I've never had a crime happen to me and then I called the cops and then they went and got the perpetrator. That has never happened. That has never happened. We're paying for a standing army that doesn't do shit. That fucks us over. Non-stop. Never catches the criminals, never stops the crime, never stops the criminals criminalizing the neighborhood, but they'll fuck over good, kind people. Because that's, you got to get your quota, right? And the good, lawful, kind people, well, they pull over. They're respectful of the extreme, repeated sexual and physical abuse. The prosecution focused on what could have been if Lily had been allowed to live. And so they said that, well, you're not thinking about Lily. And there's some truth to that. Give her 10 years. Give her 20 years, right? But the prosecution focused on what could have been if Lily had been allowed to live. Lily could have been, you know, incredible, right? Lily could have cured cancer. Lily's not even going to go to kindergarten, let alone, you know, find a husband, raise a family, get a career, open up a bank account. Lily never got a bank account. Why? Because her mother needed to kill her. Lily never got a bank account. Lily never got to go to kindergarten, so never got to do anything. Never got to plant a tree. Never got to walk to the park. Never got to get picked up by the yellow school bus and go into public schools. Never got to go to the grocery store and get some gum. Never got to go to the movie theater. Never got to experience anything. So Andrew Vaughn, he's correct when he says that Lily came into the world unloved and Lily left the world unloved. She never was loved at all. Unloved to begin with, unloved to the end. And she's newborn, so I'm guessing, what, one year? So less than 12 months? Was it one day? Two days? One month? How long did Lily actually get to live? 
So Andrew Vaughn, uh, Vag, Vagon, Vag, Vagon, he's saying that sure, Amy Carr had a tough upbringing, but she killed and took a life. The judge sentenced Amy Carr to 48 years for second degree murder, seven years for tampering with the human body, and then they run consecutive, because of course, why not? We're going to fucking add them on top of one another. So Amy Carr is going to be in jail for 55 years. That's a life sentence. Average lifespan is 76. She's already 22, so that'll leave her 77 years of age. If she can make it to 77 years of age, which average lifespan is 76, so most likely she won't. But every year after 77, she'll get to be an American again. And then after she gets released after 55 years, she still have five years of parole after she's released. She's This is America, and she's had the worst fucking experience ever. She's had the worst experience ever. And to be honest with you, what kind of mother do you think a, a goddamn person who's been sexually and physically abused her entire life, lived in 23 different locations, has no stability, so therefore, what kind of you know citizenship, what kind of continuity, what kind of institutions is she creating, is she, what chance did Amy Carr have, what chance did Lily have in capitalist America, in capitalist police brutality America? Also, spoil the rod, you know, spare the rod, spoil the child. All this discipline, abuse, all these motherfucking religious sons of bitches. It, religion's supposed to give us order and goodness. Religion's not giving us either one of these things. They are fucking evil, and they don't give a shit about it. They bring chaos and destruction, and they're wicked as fuck. Her father didn't love her, her mother didn't love her. Yes, that's true. So I think that Lily should get justice. I would say 10 years sounds fair. 20 years sounds like you're pushing it. 55 years? Get the fuck out of here. 55 years. Meanwhile, Letitia Staunch, it's going to seem like she's going to go to the mental health. She's going to gain the system. They're going to say she's somewhat crazy. She's going to go to the mental health ward. And then she's going to be out in a month. 55 years, and then they're saying, well, she already served, you know, two years, two years and a couple months, so we're going to go ahead and add that. It's okay, thank you, Court. That's so fucking nice. We're going to send you to 55 years, but you know, we're going to shave off two years for what? Well, the, all the time you've already served. Oh, oh, so I'm already working on this crazy-ass sentence? I'm glad we could get justice for Lily. It's not justice. It's too fucking much. It's too fucking much. You got to be proportional. Just because nobody loved her coming into this world or coming out of this world doesn't mean that this community doesn't care for her. This community fought for her. This community want to get her justice. So for all the pro-life people, they should totally be on board with this, right? If you care about a fetus and you care about a, a bunch of cells, but then you would definitely care about a newborn baby that was actually... Everybody agrees. Pro-life, pro-choice people, when the baby is born, that's the life. That is a life right there. And then, hell, a lot of pro-life, pro-choice people agree that, you know, it's like after second trimester or something, right? Isn't that when it becomes a life, when there's a heartbeat or... What is it? So when I compare and contrast Amy Carr versus Letitia Stouts... Tisha. Tisha. Tisha Stouts is getting more than a fucking fair deal, more than a fair shake, more than a fair... She's getting uh, legal protect, legal services. She's getting a, a procedure, but she's not getting... Amy Carr should have gone to trial with it, I think. I think if I was in the jury box and Amy Carr did a terrible, foul, evil deed. She did a terrible, foul, evil deed. She killed a baby. She killed a baby. Her own baby. A mother. A mother killed her own baby. You know what it would take, though? Because that doesn't happen in nature. Mothers, you know, sometimes, but only if they're like hungry in desperate circumstances. But in general in nature, species wants to live. Animals want to live. So the mothers and the fathers tend to their young and they want their young to be strong so they can live out in this world. Makes me think of Bambi. So with Amy Carr... What would it take for a person to murder their own kid? I think it would take some extreme circumstances. Maybe it's human nature. Maybe it's America. Maybe it's Colorado. Maybe there's something in the water in America. Maybe it's Caucasia. Maybe it's Western civilization. Maybe it was the Enlightenment. Maybe it's religion. Who knows? 
but it's fucked up. And to push a person to go against their nature, that would take a lot of social pressure, a lot of societal pressure. You would have to go against your own nature. So not only shit like this shouldn't happen at all. That being said, I feel more for Amy Carr than I do for that Letitia Staunch. Letitia Staunch seems like she's been lying and manipulating people her whole fucking life and yelling at people and being shitty to fucking people her whole fucking life. She also killed an 11-year-old. So a newborn, you know, you could have just got mad at the newborn and shook it and then that would snap its neck or something, right? They got that, that really weak neck. But an 11-year-old, well, you couldn't just shake an 11-year-old. You'd have to really, you'd have to do a lot. You'd have to really... I remember when I first went fishing and we had to clean the fish afterwards. We had this dull knife and we're supposed to chop off the fish's head. And since it was a dull knife, we were just sitting there sawing into the poor fish's head. Now I want to tie this into the, the point of this. You have all these laws in Colorado. And I just want to point out the rules of evidence. So the rules of evidence, when you come across the crime scene, you're like, well, what kind of evidence should we gather? Gather all the evidence. Anything that is relevant and material is good evidence. So get videotape and photographs and eyewitness testimonies. Get fingerprints, circumstantial evidence. They say it's supposed to be just as good as direct evidence. Gang affiliations. Find out the gang affiliations of everybody. Also, video... Video fluorography, video fluoroscopy. If you could do an x-ray motion picture of the patient's bones and soft tissues in motion, the industry of the chiropractic, the chiropractic industry, they accept video fluoroscopy as good evidence, but not QEEG, Q-E-E-G, Q-E-E-G test, no good. Also, don't do any polygraph test, no hypnotic trances, and no voice print analysis, too. None of those are good evidence in Colorado. This is case law, 1981 Anderson decision, Colorado Supreme Court. No polygraph test, according to the 1981 Anderson decision. Trial court can reject cumulative evidence. So 1983 Unreen appeals decision, U-N-R-E-I-N, 83 Unreen. So what is good evidence? Fingerprints is good evidence. Circumstantial evidence is good evidence. DNA is good evidence. Videotape, uh, photographs are good evidence. Eyewitness testimonies are good evidence. Relevant and material is anybody that has any information. Really, the victim's right says anybody that has knowledge or doesn't have knowledge of the incident is a you know witness. Do you have knowledge? Nope. Okay, we need to at least ask that question. 2003 Martinez decision says that there's a liberal admission of evidence. According to the Colorado Rules of Evidence, what is relevant and material? So if we just think about this last case that we had... Amy Carr, there was the baby's partially buried in the yard. Why is that? She shook the baby and then it was dead and then she couldn't. What happened? Was it something out in the yard? What happened? And then she tried to, what happened? But the relative called 911, so we got the dead body. We got the baby right there. Did she admit to doing it? The girl's name is Lily. Amy Carr lived in the town of Yoder at the time. Yo, Y-O-D-E-R, Judge Kane subtracted 687 days from the prison sentence, a credit for time. The judge committed car now 21 to 5 roll years of parole once she's released. This is crazy. This is too much. This is too much. Thomas Kelly Kane. Who is the person in front of Letitia Staunch? Is that Thomas Kelly Kane too? Because this is too much. Basically, you're fucking Amy Carr over because she agreed to a plea bargain. But maybe that's been her fucking problem her whole life. She's been, just been going along to get along. She's been, you know, 15 different addresses. No, how about I don't go with you this time? No, mother and father. You keep moving me here, there, everywhere. I can't get established. I'm just going to stay right here. And if you don't like that, I'm going to emancipate. I'm going to go to the orphanage. I'm going to emancipate myself. I'm not going back to your house. Would she have the frame of mind to do it? Would she have the stamina and the fortitude? 
Then she pleaded guilty to second degree murder, tampering with a deceased human body. Both felonies. Maybe she thought, well, you know, she did do those things. I think her case for not guilty by reason of insanity is stronger. And I think it would have worked for me, I think, probably, depending on, depending if it's credible, right? There's an offer of proof that there has maybe been some tough childhood stuff. So we got to look into it, you know, look into it, talk about it. Was it intense? Was it day to day? Was it nonstop? Was she going through it that fucking day? Was she going through it that fucking moment? Because if that's the case, then she's an abused child herself. An abused child who just turned an adult, has a baby, and has no support in the world. No, you know what, it's America, so there's no social safety net at all. And we don't have universal health care. Sam Cedar made sure we didn't get universal health care, so I don't, maybe she, could she not talk to anybody? I don't know. But evidence, if we're to try to get the evidence, we don't really need videotape of the thing. Really, we just need to talk to Amy Carr and to see if she would talk about it and maybe she would explain the circumstances and usually they would try to get her to say the thing to get a confession so they could get the conviction. But if I'm a juror, I want to know the circumstances. I want to know to what extent was she sexually and physically abused. Amy Carr, to what extent was she sexually and physically abused? She's got 15 different addresses from age 5 to 15. She doesn't have any stability getting abused in every goddamn state. Everywhere they go, she's just getting abused. And then finally has a child. Why? She found some man who liked her or seemed like uh, liked her. And then Mr. Man leaves and then she's by herself. What, what the hell happened? Because a lot of these assholes will pretend that if you tell the truth, well, you're just a dumb fuck. You don't know how this fucking game works. But I feel like some people will tell the truth in hopes that you'll understand. And a jury could understand. If I was in the jury, I would understand. If you were abused non-fucking-stop, and then you did a foul, evil deed, I would be more forgiving when it comes to the sentencing. So... Not guilty by reason of insanity, I I might I would go I would go for yes if it could be proved that Amy Carr was being sexually and physically abused and had all those different addresses and look at the t in totality if she had a, a weak support system and if all those circumstances if her environment and her circumstances and the people that raised her in the public schools and the cops and everybody turned their back on Amy Carr Amy Carr didn't have a chance so what chance did her child have and since we had no social safety net now she's going to be in jail for life three hots and a cots for life why couldn't we take care of people before we get them in prison get you three hots and a cots before you get to jail now nah, you're a human being. You don't have to commit a crime to get three hots and a cot. And then what if the three hots and a cot prevents crimes from happening? Well, shit, I got three hots and a cot. I don't need to go around hurting people because I'm hungry. So RIP to Lily Carr. This just doesn't seem like... You know, the terrible face of a fucking mad killer that deserves 55 years in prison. 55 fucking years. Meanwhile, Robert Pickrell, he took he did a drive-by on me. That's an attempted murder. Nobody's even arrested, that son of a bitch. Plus the other fucking crimes that I've witnessed. So apparently some people are allowed to commit crimes in Colorado, but other people, if you're poor and you're... Anyways, so just real quick, yes to videotapes, yes to photographs, no to polygraphs, yes to eyewitness testimonies, yes to fingerprints, no to QEEG test, QEG test, yes to VF test, video fluoroscopy test, yes, DNA, DNA, saliva, blood, Photograph, videotape, eyewitness, testimonies, fingerprints, circumstantial evidence. They say it's the same as direct evidence. It's not the same as direct evidence, but there you need a pile of evidence. You could do deductive reasoning or inductive reasoning. So one piece of evidence could clearly prove a thing, but a whole pile of evidence can prove a thing too. And gang affiliations. 
There's a whole bunch. There's the 98 Webster decision. There's the 2015 Clark decision, 1994 Moya decision. Over and over again, it says that gang affiliations is that it is relevant to witnesses and especially the situation because gang affiliations means that the Nazis are more likely to, you know, attack people that are not Nazis. So if you're part of a gang, if you're part of the Hell's Angels, then that very much is a part of the full picture of who and why you are and what you're doing, what you're doing. The defendant is entitled to present evidence to create doubt. That's the 1981 Bueno Appeals decision. No polygraph test, no voice print analysis, no Quag test, no hypnotic trances. Apparently, people were putting other people under hypnosis and then getting testimonies out of them. And then, well, I, I got to put them under hypnosis again in order to get the same. What? No, we're not doing all. That's crazy. The trial court can reject cumulative ev evidence. 83 Unreen. But it doesn't have to. And apparently there's something else that says if that's all they have, just cumulative evidence, but that's the only exception that's good, not good enough. Collateral conjecture evidence is not admissible. Collateral conjecture evidence. That's the 1981 Botham decision. 1994 Salas, if evidence is, is relevant and material, its admission is not error merely because the evidence is cumulative. That's 1994 Salas appeals decision. 1983 people in the interest of msh mish, mish, sh, sh. no qualitative difference between direct and circumstantial evidence 2001 Cauley says that video animation of a shaken baby syndrome is okay that's interesting we just we we're talking about shaken baby syndrome so 2001 Cauley c-a-u-l-e-y appeals decision they're saying that you could do a, there's a video animation. So apparently this is what happens when the shaking. And so I guess it probably shows a person shaking a baby video animation of it. And it said that it was allowed. So no collateral conjecture evidence, no polygraph evidence, no quag test, no voice print analysis, uh, analysis, no hypnotic trances. There is something about an experiment in the McCombs, 1981 McCombs appeals decision, experiments are allowed? I'm not for sure. But yes for direct evidence, yes for circumstantial evidence, yes for videotape, yes for photogra photograph and eyewitness testimony, yes for DNA, saliva, blood, fingerprints, circumstantial evidence. The fingerprints comes from 71 Hervey and 72 Solis. Also, thermostat and three weapons in a holster. You could bring material. If it's relevant and material, that's very liberal. 2003 Martinez, that's very liberal admission of evidence. The way I think about the rules of evidence is, is that thing that you got right there, is it what you think it is? This is a videotape of A, B, and C, D, and E. If I'm the judge, do I look at that videotape and I say, no, that's not what that is. You let everything in. You let anything and everything. The rule is let anything and everything that's relevant and material. And so really you should be, you shouldn't restrict everything. You should be, let them play. You ever been to a basketball game where the ref calls every single fucking thing and nobody can play a damn game? And then everybody's fouled out. By the first quarter. So you can actually bring material things in there. There's a case with the thermostat. I guess it was with the company. The manufacturing company. Simon V. Coppola. Francis Ford Coppola. Simon V. Coppola. 1993 appeals decision. Three weapons and a holster is the riding oar. 1994 Ryden Noor N O U R appeals decision. CRE is strongly it favors the admission of evidence. The 2001 Medina Medina opinion appeals opinion. So CRE strongly favors the admission of evidence. Evidence excluded as irrelevant. That comes from the loss cutoff. Kutoff 1983. That's Ogburn. Ogburn was a part of that decision. 
Uh, last two things that you can admit is retaliation, evidence of threats against witness properly admitted, and evidence of witness uh, in fear of retaliation. That's 2006 Villa Lobos appeals decision, 1995 Eggert appeals decision. So that's all the rules of evidence so far that I know. Yes to video animation, no to the QEEEG test, yes to circumstantial evidence, yes to direct evidence, of course. Of course you have to have direct evidence. All relevant and material evidence goes in. Cumulative, no. They can say no, but not just because it's cumulative. Not merely because the evidence is cumulative. There's got to be more to it than just that. And no to collateral conjecture evidence. And All right, I'm repeating.